Hello my friends, today we will be taking this image over here. Let's go right into it. Now if you're interested in learning product photography, please note that I made a playlist with all my product photography videos, so it will be easier for you to find it and binge watch. The first thing we need, we need a surface and I will be using this table. This is a table from Replica Surfaces. I have a whole review on it. You can go watch that if you are interested in this. And on my table, I will place a surface, any color, any surface, it doesn't really matter. I'm just placing this one like this, because this is where I will put my driftwood. Now, driftwood, you can buy it for cheap from any kind of pet store where they sell uh, fish, fish tanks, and so on. I bought mine on Amazon, it came in as a pack of two, so this is my driftwood. I'll put the link in the description below on my driftwood that I purchased. And I think I'll be using this piece over here. And let's see, I'll be placing it, well, something like that. Nothing really to it. Uh, the way I'm imagining this is since it's driftwood, I'm imagining it um, like sunset colors. The perfume is kind of like a golden tone. So I want to shoot a gold light through the back and kind of illuminate it, back, backlight it. So this is my perfume over here. I will give it a good wipe. I probably should wear gloves when I do this. So I have to do less post-processing on cleaning fingerprints. But this will have to do for now. Let's see. For the background, I have here some lead diffusing material. I will put a link to this one as well in the description below. Now, this lead diffusing material, it is pretty expensive. A cheaper alternative would be the Savage Transloom. I'll also put that in the description below. That is like half the price, price of the lead. And it's just as good, it's just, I prefer the lead because it's a thinner material. Savage Transloom, it's very, very plasticky and thicker. All right, I will be shooting with my Sony 7R4, uh, 90 millimeter macro lens, and I am tethered in Capture One. Let's get our uh, composition ready here. And what I wanna do is place my bottle into this driftwood. And you see my driftwood, it kind of tips over and it doesn't wanna hold, so I need to prop it up there with something. So let's see. I'll just be using a, you know, Arca Swiss plate because we will not see the bottom of this driftwood anyway. I just need to kind of get it a little bit more straight. And let's see, I'll place the bottle like so. Great. Now, before we take any shots, we have to make sure that we get the black frame. So none of this ambient light will affect our shot. I have a lot of ambient light, all my ceiling lights, and a large LED video light over there. Let me just start my screen recording so you can see what I'm seeing. And all my lights are off. Let me just get my composition ready here. And I will take this image in a landscape orientation, but I think I will in post, I'll make it a portrait for the thumbnail. So, I don't know, I'll just start with landscape orientation. All right, before we take any images, let's make sure we get the black frame and I am recording my screen, yes. My uh, F, I'm shooting at shutter speed one over 200, F8 ISO 100. Let's take an image. And we do have a black frame, so we have no light pollution. So now let's start putting on some lights into our image. For the lights, what I will be using is my backlight will be an AD100. Just as, this is a Godox AD100. It's a very small, tiny, powerful little light. I love it. And I have it on a light stand onto this bracket. And I'll just point it kind of the direction of my perfume, something like that. So that is my first light. Let's dial it in. Let's take an image. And that is not bad. Right off the bat, I can see the driftwood behind the bottle. It's kind of interfering. You can see it through. So I can't read the label very well. 
That means I need to move my bottle more to the right so that writing does not interfere. And since we move it, we have to fix our composition again. Something like that. And let's take a shot. All right, we can see the label. That is great. Now, remember I said I want that sunset light behind it. So that means we need to put a gel on our light to get it more golden. So I will be using a grid and a gel that is just like a yellowish kind of gel, just like so. And now let's go take a shot. And now, because we put a gel on it, the light is not powerful enough. So we need to increase the power. So right now with that 116, I change it to 1.8 power on the flash. And we'll take another shot. That is a little bit better. It needs more light, but also by looking at it, I think it's not golden enough. We need to go with a gel that is more orange than that. So I will be taking off this golden gel and I will place maybe something really orange like this. Great. And I'll increase the power from one eighth to one quarter. Because the gel is darker, it's going to suck out more power. So let's see. Definitely more golden. I think I want to bring it closer to the bottle. So I will move my background light closer to my subject. Maybe something like that. Let's see how that works. It gives me some nice highlights, but now it's too powerful, so I need to take it down because I brought it closer to my subject, so it's too powerful. I'll take it down to 116. So let's see what we get now. It's too dark, too close to the background and it needs to get closer to my bottle. So let's see. It's just a matter of going back and forward. I'm going to go to 1 8 power. Let's see what we get now. Better. Better, better. Now, maybe I want to move it even closer to the bottle. So let's see if I move it just a little bit closer. Not bad. Um, I'm going to move it away from the background a little bit just because I want to illuminate more of the background. Right now it's just a spot and then the right side is too dark. There you go, that is better. So this is the before and this is the after. Definitely better. I, I see my background has lots of lots of spots. We will have to take care of it in post. But that is looking good. Let's bring a secondary light. And now we need to light this driftwood because right now it's just in complete darkness. And then also we need to light the cap. So I'll bring another AD100. I'll turn my softbox to be something like that. And let's see, I'll turn on the power. Right now it's at a quarter power. Let's see what we get. I'm going to bring this pretty close to my subject. Something like that. Let's take a shot, see where we are. 
driftwood is looking good. The cap underneath looks good. The right side looks good. I do, however, on the cap on the front, want it to have a little bit more of a gradation. So it's brighter on the right side and darker on the left side. For that, what I will do, I will first lift up my softbox a little bit and try to get it even closer. And I'm only, I do only care about the cap right now. So let's see how that would look. That is not bad, but I'm not getting much of a gradation. So let's see something like that. That is better. Um, I'm a quarter power. I'm gonna take it up to a half power. And now I feel like maybe it's too bright. What I will do, I will angle the soft box something like that, and hopefully that will give me a little bit more gradation on the cap. And it did. That is looking better. Maybe get even a little bit closer. Not bad. I can also create that gradation and post. So let's try to do that. Let's take one that is a darker frame. And that way I will show you how to do it in post. So that is my darker frame. And I'll take one kind of like medium dark. So that was a quarter power. This is a half power. And then one where I bring it even closer. So it will be the brightest out of the three exposures. And we'll work with those in post. There you go. All right, things are looking good. We are ready to go edit this on the computer. Now here are our images. And first thing we need to select the images we will be using for our edit. This is the last image before we introduce our side light. So I'll mark this one with the two. And then I'll be using this one just for this uh, light over here on the cap, just a little bit of a rim. So I'll select that one as well. And then going through it, let's see. I will select this one that is the darker cap and this is our bright cap. So there you go, our images are selected. Now I will go back to the first one and we'll do just a very quick basic edit. For the edit, I will just add a little bit of contrast, something around 17, 18. I will take the highlights down just a little bit, not too much, something like that. I will leave the shadows the way they are. I would add a little bit of white, something like that, and a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of remove chromatic aberration, enable profile correction, a little bit of sharpening. I'm holding our option so I can create a mask and only sharpen the bottle. There you go. Now with this basic edits, I wanna go here onto the grid mode and select this one, hold down command, select our other images that we decided we will use. And then over here on the right, sync settings, and I'll leave everything on synchronize. And now Lightroom will apply the same edits to all these other images. So they will all have the same edits. Now, while the images are still selected, I will go into photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And now that we are in Photoshop, let's align our layers. I'm gonna put this one on the bottom because this is the image we're starting with. This is the one where we only had the backlight. And then let's build it up from there. I'm gonna move this to the top. Let's see what do we have here. This is the light that I just want to light the driftwood and maybe this little highlight here on the cap. 
So first thing we need to do, we need to make a selection of the bottle and we need to make a selection of the driftwood, two different selections. So let's make the selection of the bottle first. For that, I will be using this curvature pen tool. I will zoom in at 100% and I will just be, maybe zoom in even closer so I can be a little bit more accurate and click 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 we're making a selection if you've never used this curvature pen tool i really recommend it especially for beginners i've shown many videos on how to use it and it's very very easy what you do basically you're just clicking and making points and this tool when you get to a corner you will want to make a curve so you see if I click over here, see how it was trying to make a curve. In order to make this corner a sharp corner, I'll hold down option on the Mac, Alt on Windows and click on this corner. And now I can even rearrange it. And then I'll click on my last point and keep moving along. Option, click on that corner. And let's see. It's very, very easy. It's a lot easier to learn than the regular pen tool and it's just as accurate. Now here I'm just going to kind of select even some of this uh, driftwood because it doesn't really matter so much in this case i'll go with something like this but then i'll make sure i am exact when i get to this part And we close the path, Command-0 to fit the screen, right-click on it, make a selection. And then I'll keep my feather radius at 0 0.5, anywhere between 0 0.5 and 1 is good. I will click OK, and now you see I have selected everything else but the bottle. And I want to invert that. For, go, for that, go to Select Inverse. And then I will put it on this layer when I want to take some of that light for the cap, and I will create a mask. There we go. Now, in order to select the driftwood, I will turn off this layer and I'll go back to my basic layer and I'll just use the quick selection tool. And with this tool, we just kind of drag and this should make a pretty accurate selection, something like that. And then I will take this selection onto the next layer and I'll make a mask. Great. So I have my bottle over here and the driftwood over here. Now let's build this shot. I have my first layer, I'll turn on the second layer, and from here really all I want is this uh, highlight here on the cap. And I think what I will do, let's see. What I will do for this, I will take these three layers over here, hold down, click on one, hold down shift, click on the others, and then I'll do command G to put them into a group. And for this group, I'll take the mask of the bottle and I'll put it as a mask for the group. So now everything I'm doing, it only affects the bottle into this group. So for this layer, I will make a mask and with the white brush, X to toggle between black and white, I will just paint this highlight over here. And that's all I want to take from that layer. Now the next thing I want to do from the next layer, you see I, we already made the mask for the driftwood, but I want to get this out of the group because the group has a mask, we can only see it where the bottle is. So the driftwood is not part of the bottle. So what I need to do is duplicate this layer and get it out of the group. To do that, hold, on, hold down Option, click on this layer and just drag it upwards. And that will duplicate it. You see we have two of them. And now this one, it's not in this group. If I collapse the group, you see, it's separate. 
So that is good. Now I can delete this mask here because I don't need this mask anymore because I already have it on the top. So I will delete it. Great. What can we get from here light wise? Um, I'm not sure I will take anything. Let's see the next one. The next one is our brightness on the cap. And remember I said I want to create a gradation in here. So I think I will use, I will use that one for the gradation. And this is how I will do that. I will click on my layer and I will make a black mask. So click on, hold down option, click on the mask. And now we're hiding this whole layer. And then on this mask, make sure you're on the mask. I'll go here on the left and take my, this uh, gradient and I have a gradient now it's from the black to white so it's this one over here so because I have black and white and we're working on masking I want to drag this gradient from this side to this side something like that and you see how now we have a gradient this bright over here and it's darker over here so that is what I want to do with that layer. But I only wanted to affect the cap. You see right now we have this highlight in here, some highlights on the bottle. So what I will do, I will take a black brush and on the mask, I will just mask it out over here on the bottom. And I need math, black, not white, I'm sorry. So I'll do command Z and make sure X to paint with black. Make my brush even smaller maybe. And make sure I'm masking this out from over here. Now I can make it bigger. And I only need to paint over the bottle because remember we have a mask for the group. We're only affecting the bottle on this group. Something like that. And that is looking good. Now, another thing I want to do, remember I told you I want to crop it and to, for the thumbnail of this uh, video. So I'll do an eight by 10 crop. And I want to make sure it's straight. I'm looking at the edge of the cap to make sure it's aligned with my lines. Something like that. And click okay to accept the changes. And now we have some empty pixels, so maybe I'll just make it even a little bit smaller. Let's see, something like that. Click enter. Now this color of the background doesn't really match with the color of my liquid here. So what I wanna do is take my brush tool and then hold down option and choose this color from the liquid and then create a solid color adjustment layer. Click OK and change the blending mode from normal to color. And this kind of colorizes everything in the image. So I want to mask out the bottle and the driftwood. An easy way to do this, we already have a mask for each one of this. So if I um, click on this mask of the bottle, hold down option and just drag it to the top, it will duplicate it and we'll copy it over here. But now I want to invert it so I can hide the bottle command I to invert it. And now we are hiding the color from the bottle. To copy the driftwood mask, I will hold down command and click on here. And that will make a selection of that mask. And then with this mask selected, I will take the paint brush with black and just paint over it. And that will remove that color from my driftwood. Command D to get rid of the marching ends. Now this orange in the background, it's way too saturated. Double click on the color, go over here to S for saturation and bring down the saturation. If you bring it all the way down, it becomes black and white image. So just a little bit desaturated. Now I also want to add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer because my image is just a little bit too dark. Maybe brighten it a little bit, add a little bit of contrast. And then you can make a blank layer and go around it with a spot healing brush tool and make sure you get rid of all this dust and impurities, whatever was going on on my background. Also make sure you zoom in really closely. You see there's little dust on the bottle and make sure you remove those as well. Command zero to fit the screen. Now I already did all those little cleanup and here was my edited image, my final image.
I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.